Alrighty, I guess it's four o'clock and it's Monday, August 19. Um, I'll call the City Housing Commission uh, meeting together. Tori? Present. Gary? Uh, I think I can. Thank you. Gary is. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. I just learned that uh, yeah. about half hour ago. Yeah. Um, well, and Joyce. Here. And I'm here, Matt. So we have a. Um, Quorum. So, <laughs> uh, anyway, our first order of business is to look over the uh, June um, minutes since we didn't have a meeting last month, which I'm partially due to missing. So, well, I, I did miss, but <laughs> we had, to, had to take care of my health. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> Although it's funny, once uh, when I was new on this commission, and I, my for, the former chair lady, I called her on a Monday afternoon, and I said, uh, "Audrey, I'm not going to make the meeting today." And she said, "You better be in the hospital or have a very good reason." I said, <laughs> "I am in the hospital." <laughs> oh. <laughs> she was pretty strict. So sounds like it. <laughs> It gives me a chuckle every once in a while. So she was a good person, but. And I did miss this meeting, so. Okay. Anyway, does anybody have any uh, questions or corrections uh, for those minutes? Um, if not, I'll ask for a motion to approve those. I make a motion to approve the meetings from, or the minutes for the June 17th meeting. I second the notes from the June 17th meeting. Great, it's been moved and seconded to approve those minutes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Here are none those pass. Now we'll look at the June uh, financial numbers, financial reports, I guess they're called. And again, ask if there's any um, questions or corrections here. Is that a question mark you just wrote down, Joyce? <laughs> Was that a question mark? You just no, okay. All right. Okay. I uh, move to approve the June financial report. Second. Great. It's been moved and seconded to approve the June financial reports. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say, say same sign. So here are none. Those pass. And next we'll look at the June utilization numbers. Which, as I remember, right, they ticked up a little bit. So. Mm -hmm. You guys have been busy filling. Uh, yes. Filling um, less vouchers, more spending. So when we increased, if you remember, we increased the bedroom size, allowing families to separate opposite gender children that are over the age of six, which could move a family from a three to a four bedroom unit or a two to a three bedroom unit. Correct. And we saw a significant increase in the amount of funding that was being used then. But this is funding that you were submitting to get Approval for anyways, right? Or I remember you talking about that. Yeah. This was the um, approval to raise the payment standard. So they didn't increase the funding, um, which is what we hope will happen this this calendar year. Yeah. We just requested the ability to increase the fair market rent standard in this area so that we can get people leased up a lot quicker. Okay. Okay, um, 
there's no other questions on June utilization report, I'll ask for a motion to approve those. I approve, I uh, <laughs> approve the June utilization report. Second. Yeah, I guess you two gotta do the work. Yep, we're the only two. <laughs> <laughs> All I have to do is talk since I don't get to vote. Um, all those in favor of approving the June utilization report, say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign, so those pass. Now we'll go on to the July uh, financial. Um, Malia, anything you want to mention in there? Um, we utilized more housing assistance funds in July because for financial reporting reasons, um, because the city runs on a fiscal year and HUD runs on a calendar year, we pay the July payment in July and not in June. And then we also pay the August payment in July, which is what we typically do. Um, and so that if you see the increase in the, the significant increase in what we've utilized fund-wise, it would be because um, where you see, I'm sorry, just so I, let me point it out to you on there. It would be under rehabs and uh, rental assistance and utility reimbursement, 749204 which is generally more than half that we usually use for the month. It's because we did pay two months in one month, which is which happens once a year. Those of you that don't know, and just to, I know some of these are already at 100% in the first month, but mm -hmm. those are things that are typically paid off in bulk at the beginning of the year. Correct. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Those are, yeah. those are automatic. You have your automatic charges to the, to the program that are going to come off at the very beginning of the fiscal year. So I remember asking that question many years ago. What I was doing, I said, how can we already get 100% well? Sorry, just because I'm wondering. So you said the rental assistance, that's for two months? Yes. So see, It just seems high. It is high. So it's usually around 360 to 380. But for financial reporting reasons, we would normally pay the previous month's, the current month's rent in the previous month, right? Mm-hmm. But for the month of July only, we pay the month of July's rent in July, and we continue to pay August's rent in July. So it's for that month only so that we meet financial accounting principles uh, of closing out that fiscal year. Okay. So then, but so like, for instance, in June, it was only 40000 was that was that like a so in June outlet? yeah and that's partially because we had already paid most of June's rent in May okay. at the end of May and that's just to close out that fiscal year that's a, that's a few other housing payments that were processed in the month of June okay. for June mm -hmm. got it that's a good question though <laughs> so there will still be some uh, payments made uh, for August then yes. Uh, yes, we're still making every week I'm processing payments, and so those August payments will still process. We could still have August payments in October, November, December, January. We will pay any month's rent in that fiscal year and even go back into another year worth of payments, but within this fiscal year. So I can pay June 22 HAP payment for a tenant, not likely, or reimbursement. Let's use reimbursement. Someone turns in their utility bill and they have a utility reimbursement coming from our, we can go as far back as possible, as far back as they qualified, but paying it in this fiscal year. Yeah. That's very lenient. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And I have, I think I've been here two and a half years. I think I've gone, the farthest I've gone back is two years. It's not, it doesn't generally happen because people typically, they're, they're entitled to reimbursement based off of their income, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but they don't always provide their 
the documentation that we need. And yeah. sometimes they leave the program, we never have it. So the funds just sit there. Jeez. All right. Are there any other questions on this? No. If not, I motion to approve the July financial report. Second. Great. It's been moved and seconded to uh, approve the July financial report. Um, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed saying sign. Those passed. So now we'll go on to July utilization. That looks like there's been a bit of a drop there. Malaya. Yes, there are some. There are quite a few vouchers um, that ended up getting absorbed by other housing authorities that were being billed for, um, and I'll talk to you a little bit about that when we talk about new business oh. for ports. I know that you guys had mentioned before wanting to track people who are porting into our housing authority and people who are porting out. Uh -huh. um, so I have some updates on that, um, and then people just natural attrition from the program. People just generally transitioning out of the program, whether voluntarily or involuntary. So that's kind of fluid. But our costs are still, again, really high, um, even though we've had a decrease in the number of current vouchers, just because of the cost of rent and the increase in the voucher size. Are you seeing, and maybe it's national stories I hear about the increase in rents the last several years, I guess mm -hmm. kind of started during COVID or ex post COVID. Well, which I shouldn't say post COVID because that's mm -hmm. still around, but uh, it's yeah. not the pandemic it was, but um, is the Quad City or specifically Davenport seeing a, a a big raise in rent rates? I think overall in the Quad Cities Metroplex area, there's a general increase in rent. Um, we are expecting that the fair market rents will go up again in October um, and reflect a, a significant increase to match what the higher rents are, which will have an impact on our 120% payment standard. Um, so, and at that time, we may have a discussion as to whether or not we will continue to utilize 120% payment standard if fair market rents match what we are already assisting households with. Um, but yeah, to answer your question, I do think that um, there's a significant increase in rents, and a lot of that is because of avail availability, um, especially for larger units. We have a lot of larger families. Um, you do have places that, as you see, Federal Point down the street has just opened up. Oh, right. But those are generally one and two bedroom units. And and so um, units for larger families are not as readily available, and therefore landlords have an opportunity to charge a lot higher rent. Does that, I shouldn't say that place, it's got a name, Federal Point, do they accept Section 8? They do. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, did, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I would say for me, I think I've seen rents go up significantly, but again, it goes down, it comes to, there's there's a lot more people renting now, and so, and a lot less, right? So, it, you know, right away then, that's going to increase. It's very similar to like the housing market, right? There's There's buyers, but there's not any houses, so that you know, increases the price and what people are willing to pay for those. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's a great analogy. It, it, it's the same thing. It's not a lot of availability either way, and you do have more renters now. Mm -hmm. um, you have more people coming to your community that are renters for economic opportunities. Um, so that changes the market as well. Yeah. Okay, are there any other questions about this? If not, I'll ask for a motion to um, accept this. I make a motion to accept the July utilization report. I second. 
Okay, thank you. It's been moved and seconded to uh, approve the utilization report for July. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Post same sign. Okay. Now, what do we have for communications, Malia? Um, okay. Um, I do have some, um, well, I consider new information regarding um, ports. And ports are for commissioners, for everyone in the commission, when I refer to the term ports. Um, those are current voucher holders that are coming from another housing authority that want to transfer their voucher to our housing authority. That is called porting in. And current voucher holders that are within our jurisdiction, the city of Davenport, that want to transfer their voucher to another jurisdiction are considered porting out. And so um, due to um, the obvious constraints in funding at this time, um, we are only allowing port transfers where the other housing authority will allow them to build them, allow us to build them for administering that voucher. Prior to this decision, we were allowing port um, transfers to come into our jurisdiction and we were absorbing them. So they were becoming part of this uh, Davenport Housing Authority's voucher program. Now they will maintain their participation in the other program that they're coming from. We will bill them for that voucher. So they will still be a voucher in their program, but they will be residing here and that will free up vouchers for residents or participants who are on the wait list in Davenport. I, yeah, that, I think that's fair. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. And the only, um, the only issue that the challenge that we're running to right now is funding um, because there was a PIH notice that was just released. And PIH notices are notifications from HUD to the housing authorities where um, there will be certain offsets. So if you're spending outside, as you see, we're at 102% last month, we were at 101%, you're incurring an offset and you need funding, additional funding to balance that offset. And so we're requesting additional funding from HUD so that we don't go into a deficit or a shortfall, all right? Um, and if, you, if a housing authority goes into a shortfall, um, you could have considerable issues getting future funding. Um, you have to work with a team of financial analysts to make sure that your housing authority um, stays afloat with their finances. So we are working to not have that as an issue. And one of the ways that we're striving to do that is only um, is billing for vouchers that are and not absorbing those vouchers that are coming in so that we still are able to maintain enough funding to um, to pull from the wait list from our uh, current from our current wait list for participants in this area. So here's the question if somebody moved in from an area, say a higher rent area like Chicago mm -hmm. into here, do they uh, get a higher rate? Uh, a payment standard? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the payment standard is determined by the housing authority that they're going to, which would be this housing authority. Okay. That's... Now, the caveat to that is, is if they port to Chicago and Chicago's got a higher Correct. payment standard, at one point we were allowing Chicago to bill us for what they would charge, which is significantly higher. It could be a couple of thousand dollars per household. We have now since changed that policy it's effective immediately. Um, and, and so if, if anyone from our jurisdiction wants to go to another housing authority, we would have to be paying the same payment standard here as though they were here or less for them to be able to port. Um, if someone wants to come into our housing authority, they have to, one, be able to be billed. Two, they have to be able to accept what our payment standard is for that household. So that we are not, we are not using more funding than we can afford to, and we're helping more households get into the program. Good. Oh, that makes sense. I just wasn't sure that billing part of it, how much 
The billing can be kind of complicated. I'm learning a lot myself. <laughs> and HUD doesn't make it very clear, so it's trial and error. Yeah, but, but no, we're, we're doing really well um, um, with our vouchers. We currently have 41 um, vouchers that are open from people that have been pulled on the wait list, from the wait list and issued a voucher. So that's really good. Say that again. 41 Four. vouchers have been opened? Yes. Oh, good. Yep. So we currently have, and as if you remember, a um, uh, voucher holder has 150 days to find housing yeah. before their voucher expires. So those are people that are looking for something. Correct. Yep. Well, and those are people that would have resided within Davenport at the time they received a voucher. Okay. Do you know how many are still on the waiting list? 363. 963? 363. Oh, 363. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Do you remember what the, like, how many actually applied? Uh, 1,166. Okay. We, um, last year we did a purge around this time, actually, because we had so many people on the wait list. And as you know, people sign up, they forget they signed up, they move out of the area. Mm -hmm. Uh, they come into the area to sign up, and so we did a um, a mail out, and they were they were given 60 days to respond to our request to update information, and from that mail out, I believe we had we dropped down to 600, okay. somewhere in the 600s, so significantly less. That's why one of the month that maybe it was about a year ago when our postage. Went up yes, quite significantly. A bit. Yes. Said, yes. Yeah. Yeah. We had that big mail. It was a good explanation. <laughs> I mean, it made sense, but it yeah. was a pretty big jump for that month. And and we learned some things by open. The waitlist at that point hadn't been open for five years, and so people were anticipating it. And we learned maybe next time when we get to the point that we're going to open the waitlist, maybe we just target populations or we limit the number of you know applicants that we will allow at one period of time, so we can open the waitlist more often. That's all I have for new business, other than um, the resolution for the CMAP. Now, why don't you just refresh our memory on what we're doing? Okay. <laughs> you need to help us get this approved. And, and, um, so um, CMAP is something that we do annually, right? It's an internal process that a housing authority is responsible to report at the end of the year. And um, HUD at any point in time can say, hey, we want to see your quality assurance information. We want to know how you went through the process of collecting the information and what information you collected. And so that's <laughs> why we take the time. This whole process takes about six months. Um, so I start on it very early in the time because it does a lot of data collection and data analytics and so um, the purpose is just to measure your performance your internal performances it's a checks and balance system um, to help identify any program deficiencies um, and to promote your program integrity and help with your program operations um, so it begins with a quality control sample so for each area of the CMAP I believe there are eight or nine different areas in the CMAP, you have to collect a quality control sample. HUD doesn't dictate how you collect that sample. Um, I used 5% of our overall program in each area. It just seemed to be a nice round number. Um, and then you have to implement a quality control monitoring review. Um, and this helps to determine if the action taken meets, meets the administrative procedures and your program guidelines. Are we doing what we say we're doing, right? Um, our admin plan says that we're doing this, but what does our what does the data show me that I'm collecting, right? What does it show me? We our admin plan set shows that this is how we calculate rent, but when I pull this quality sample, you know, three out of eighteen households don't have rent calculated correctly, right? So that's 
that becomes an issue, and we have to go back and change some things programmatically. So there's lots of tenant file reviews, um, and I look at rent reasonableness, I look at waitlist preferences and eligibility because there's a section on uh, reviewing how people are selected from the waitlist and how their information is screened in terms of for eligibility. Are they notified if they're denied? How long between before after you've reviewed the information? Is a denial letter sent? So all these things are kind of put into place. Um, and then adjusting income calculations, you know, based on uh, deductions. Um, and that's and that's just all part of what this process is. Um, so HUD requires a, it does require a minimum sample size. Um, and so PHAs, we're considered a, a large PHA, I guess based off of the vouchers we have. So for every 16 plus one, for, so PHAs with 601 to 2,000 vouchers have 16 plus one for each increment of 100 over 600. And so we had 717 vouchers at the time, right? We have a lot less now, but at the time that I start pulling the sample, so that would be 18 randomly, or 16 plus one plus one, which would be 18 which means at a minimum 18 randomly selected tenants or files should be selected. And so that is the information that I have here. And it's called random sampling, right? And mm -hmm. so literally um, we run a report of all the tenants and I randomly select numbers from a number generator So this is a randomly selected number from a number generator, and I just go through and pull, put them in order, put them in order, and then I randomly pull these, these and these are going to be the numbers that I'm going to look at. So it's as random as you can get, mm -hmm. um, but it's a process. And again, uh, every agency um, has the opportunity to determine how they, how they select the process. I also wanted it to be a... Um, sampling that didn't, I didn't want it to be all one housing coordinator's inspections or all one housing coordinator's files, so I tried to um, ensure that a certain percentage was each person's, like, if I had too many of one housing coordinator, I'd go back and do another <laughs> gender, um, number generator to select, to try to randomly select another housing coordinator, the other housing coordinator's information. So I didn't get 14 files of Kelly and then three of Mike's and one of Aiden's, right? So... Otherwise, it wouldn't be a random enough sample. Okay. All right. So the sample methodology is 24 CFR 982B. PHA is quality control sample. It means an annual sample of files or records that are drawn in an unbiased manner. Doesn't get as, doesn't get any more unbiased than that, right? Using a, a general gen, number generator. Um, and then the selection is a sample. It's a, the sample is selected using an on, and so my sample was selected using an online random number generator. Um, so the, the indicators, okay? So one of the indicators is the number of new admissions and families in the fiscal year. Um, did you determine their eligibility, right? Do you have the documentation of their eligibility? Um, if you did not have documentation, were they notified? Because all of these things are steps in our administrative plan that we do in the selection um, process. And so um, we have to, of those 18, I have to determine how many of those were new participants in the program. And did we go through, did we have a checklist? Or how did we check there? They provided these documents and did they have the documents in the file? Um, another one is the number of units assisted in inspections. So I ran a report of the number of inspections that were completed this year um, and then randomly selected inspections and then assigned housing, assigned inspections to someone who was not the original person who did the inspection. So I kind of cross, um, cross the sign. So I have letters in here and the inspections <coughs> that were completed. So I have the inspections that were selected and then here are like, here's an example of a letter that was given saying that your, your unit was randomly selected for the CMAP and that they will be coming to do an inspection. If you have any questions, um, contact this office and then a copy once the inspection was completed in the file. Right. Part of it, again, just to ensure, and that it passed. If it did not pass inspection, then I need a copy of the fail letter that failed an inspection, and then there's a process that 30 days they have to take corrective action on that, and so that's documented as well. That's part of the quality assurance. Um, and then timely reexaminations and recalculations. So 
Re-exams are performed annually. Um, so if I have to check to make sure that of that random sample, that those re-exams were performed on time, no re-exams were late, um, that the rent was reasonable, and how did the housing coordinator determine that the rent was reasonable? Well, this year, in an effort to better assist our housing coordinators, we hired a third-party vendor that does housing locations. So their whole job is to put in a database all the housing units in this area. They work across the country, but they're contracted with us. So um, the housing coordinators are supposed to log in, put in an address and a description of the property, and it should pull up other uh, properties within the uh, Davenport jurisdiction that are similar to that to compare rents. And so what I was looking for is a, a documentation, which they can print, they would be able to print that off and put it in the file to show that the rent was reasonable. Um, so, how does the CMAP get rated? Um, there are high performers, which means you score at least 90%. I want to add something else here. Um, this is our documentation internally, but HUD pulls from their PIC system to pull a lot of this information based off information that is locked into our software system and exported into their uh, online browser system. Okay, so...
provide you with copies of that. I just had a couple of questions about staffing. It, I know it's small, but have you stayed pretty steady with the people that you have? I, I do. I used to, when we used to be, well, before you were with us, oh. <laughs> used to see more of them more often and, uh, and got to know more of them. But uh, yeah. since you guys are sequestered upstairs, I just wondered if, you know, things have been staying pretty steady. We have, uh, we have one person getting ready to retire. So he's leaving in five months. So we're doing some session planning there. Um, and we're just steadying right along. I mean, everyone is, you know, we're, we're, we're continuing, even though we're a small staff. Wow, oh, that was weird. <laughs> Hello? Even though we're a small staff, um, we still continue to um, utilize our vouchers. And, um, we continue to people, pull people from the wait list. We manage caseload as well, but... You know, it, it has its challenges, yes. You mentioned a part-time inspector getting bumped up, hopefully. Yeah. Is that a, a city decision to do? It is a city's decision whether or not we have an inspector. Um, we have limited funding through HUD, and so we have to be, you know, if it's it's something that is in, can be discussed, you know, we would like to have a full-time inspector at some point, especially moving to the Inspire, which is more technically detailed, you know, more detail to that than what a HUS inspection is um, and probably aligns more with what neighborhood services does. So at some point, yes, we would like to have a full-time inspector. But your uh, housing staff, they do inspections too. They do do inspections, yes. All staff do, except for myself, all staff do inspections. Yeah. I just do too busy to be out there in the field, so all the time. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I didn't know if you did too. I didn't ask that, but <laughs> yeah, I don't know that any other managers have. But um, no, I I just remember hearing that the, you know, your staff folks did those. That's, that's a good suggestion. I'm going to provide this is um, I'll kind of explain to you guys what this is, what the tax is about, because it's probably not going to make a whole lot of sense to <laughs> kind of um, explain it to you. It is a lot of people. A lot of small groups on one well, page. Yes, I was going to say. <laughs> is this something you can email in, or do you have to drive down to Kansas? City? I definitely am going to email this in. <laughs> well, I was like, did you just send this whole book in? Or maybe no, that's actually, before you send it. That's <laughs> what we keep. In the event that they ask us for documentation, they get the C map because I yeah. send the C map in and they say, "Hey, if you want to see this, go ahead." Oh. We send it right to them. Let them know how we got there. Gotcha. All right, I've got a couple more maps, and then I'll kind of explain what it means. Okay. Can maps on the website so you can see them better. Um, I can put them on our on our uh, our. Okay. Yeah, one time page. I saw some of those just because from. Couple properties that weren't far from me, and it was just interesting. Oh, cool. no, no problems with them or anything. But yeah, I just didn't realize that. Wow. There are three maps. And this obviously this might be a dumb question, but you just do Davenport. Like there's just not Davenport. anything better for that. No, Bedford is ran by ECIA. Which is through um, the city of well, it's, the <coughs> it's a rule. Um, yep. Okay, so the maps are actually part of the CMAP process. And if you map out certain information, HUD will give you bonus points, right? So you can be a high performer, and who doesn't want bonus points, right? If you want to know that, you're, you're doing well. And one of the things that they want you to do is identify where your voucher holders are during this jurisdiction of Davenport. So here you have a map of Davenport. And every little dot is a household that is in, a, in the HCV program. And these highlighted areas are low to moderate areas of high, uh, low to moderate areas of low to moderate income areas where um, there's a high concentration of minorities or poverty, right? And so if you see they're in that colored area, 
those are generally your lower income areas, right? And so what we want to do as a program is we want to offer opportunities for people with vouchers to be in areas that are outside of low to moderate income, right? So they'll have opportunities at better schools, better transportation systems, et cetera. And so that's what this essentially means is that these areas, there are very few dots in, outside of these shaded areas, and those are areas maybe we need to set up more recruitment for landlords, right? So your map kind of tells you that um, on the active. The other one is, and I don't have an extra copy here. Um, the, oh, actually I do. I better my map any further. LMI stands for? Low to moderate income. Okay. Yep. The other one is, um, uh, HUD is really interested in knowing where are your areas, where are your households that have children under the age of 18? And I apologize, because I should have printed it in color, and it might have been a little bit easier for you guys to see. Mine is in color. Yeah. <laughs> I can send it to you in color. So um, here we have, and this is, we're using census data here with the most recent census data of 2020 um, as the, your overlay on your map. And that's how we identify, because you may be asking yourself, well, how do you, how do you know what LMI areas are? Well, it's based off statistical data that was collected by the federal government, and it's information that our GIS mapper was able to just kind of pull in. And then he used the Davenport, um, he used the information I extracted from our software system since I ran a report to find households with children under the age of 18. So these are all of the households, um, and I can give you an actual number of households that we have. So we have active households with children under the age of 18. We have, I believe it's 270. Yes, it's 270. So 270 households in the program that have children under the age of 18. And then if you look at the last map, it says households with children under the age of 18, or excuse me, under the age of 18 that moved in this fiscal year, which would be 7-1-2023 through 6-30-2024. And we had 62 households that had children under the age of 18 that moved this fiscal year. Okay. So 270 households that moved like within the area? Within the area, within the jurisdiction okay. of Davenport, right? Um, and so here, I guess you could compare the number, you can compare the three different maps to see those that are actively in the program versus those who have children in the program versus those who have children who have moved in the program. And so by creating this, we actually get bonus points because we're able to answer bonus indicators through the CMAP. So as a result of um, our data analytics, collecting and sorting through information, and this takes a little bit of time too, um, but it does, you know, get us opportunities of getting a higher score in the CMAP. Um, so that is essentially all I have um, to present. Um, and then I have the resolution for the CMAP uh, that I provided you that um, we need approval. Uh, and this is the resolution. Did I take it back? Sorry. Uh, it's in, I'm sorry, it's in your packet. Yeah. I guess to be official, I'll read it. Um, this is resolution 2025-01, um, supporting fiscal year 2024 annual Section 8 Management Assessment Program, CMAP certification, whereas the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, um, requires um, that the city of Davenport, as the uh, public housing authority, uh, submit a Section 8 management assessment program uh, certification, certification for each fiscal year, and whereas the CMAP certification has been completed by the uh, PHA staff based upon information from July 1, 2023 through June 30th, 2024, and whereas a resolution is requ required to be approved by the Davenport Housing Commission before the CMAP certification can be submitted to HUD. Now, therefore, be it resolved 
that the Davenport Housing Commission approves the CMAP certification for submittal uh, to HUD by August 30th, or it's actually I, 29th. supposed to be a different day. I changed, yeah, the 29th, sorry. I updated for the... Nine oh, yes. Um, okay, yeah. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I just glanced over it. Yeah. <laughs> I remember you saying it. Yeah. Um, of the commission to authorize and execute the CMAP certification form in compliance with HUD requirements adopted uh, this 19th day of August, 2024. Um, are there any questions by the commissioners on this? Any further questions? No questions. Okay, if not, I'll ask for a motion to approve uh, this. A motion to approve the resolution supporting fiscal year 2024 CMAP Second. certification. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the resolution. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Great, that passes. So, okay. Do we have any other business? Uh, by any of the commissioners or you, Malia? Um, no, just commissioner, I need your signature on the CMAP itself and the resolution uh, before you leave today. And yep. you won't have to catch me in the hall. I'm stuck <laughs> ahead of you. I made yeah. that mistake once. And Commissioner Stoller, I don't know if I gave you a binder, but I do, I will have a binder for you with all the present as we build oh, presentations. Okay. Yep. That just so that you, you're able to keep that. So that's good. Yep, I'll have it Thank in you. the next meeting. And, and for our new commissioner that will be joining us okay. in September. So we'll have a new one. Does that mean that he's yeah. done? Is... You're done? Yeah. yeah. Gary's term Aww. expired on the 31st, so he's leaving us. But we yeah. will have a new commissioner. And Commissioner Roberts will be back in September as well. So. Well, I wanted to thank Gary for his service to us and all yeah. his input uh, that he's given us. Are so. you going to another one? Are they going to move you? Well, probably we're shooting more videos on the homeless and housing. Oh, okay. That's a big thing. That's your big thing? YouTube? I, I, I can go on YouTube. Yeah. But now you said you like shoot videos of it? Yeah, I've been shooting videos for several years. Okay. So, um, housing, homelessness, and yeah. whatever kids tied up to it. Certainly. Okay. And I was. Thank you, Commissioner. And thank you for your time and your volunteering, and your service, and your input. So we really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I do. It does, yeah, it does, you know. I just thought of this. I remember you even getting injured on a way here to a, one of our meetings in the wintertime. Yeah, because we had a big storm and I can't get over it. So thank you for I that. I just thought of that. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, if there's nothing else, I see we've got a meeting uh, September 16th. So, That's it. if not, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. I second. All right, all in favor, say aye. 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 All right, thank, thank you. you. We're adjourned. All right.